Uh, on chain CPI, Consumer Price Index, uh, that's a dangerous idea for, for retirees that, that is floating around, chain CPI. Uh, what does that uh, involve? Well, let's, let's be clear with our viewers, first of all, about what the CPI is. As you mentioned, Consumer Price Index. And what that is, it's actually a formula that looks at the price of the things that an average person buys to live. You know, food, clothing, gas for your car to be able to get to work. Uh, and, of course, prices change over time. Um, chain CPI is a little bit different. It makes assumptions that people are going to switch their preferences for what they buy that's going to lead to lower expenditures of household income. For example, I guess an illustration would be that if the price of steak jumps by 20%, <laughs> chain CPI presupposes that you'll buy less steak and you might buy more chicken. Now, that may be true, and in any given year, relating it to chain CPI, the CPI, remember, is calculated to determine the cost of living adjustment for Social Security. Mm -hmm. So this becomes a terribly important issue. And it's also used to assess eligibility for federal benefits for something like the SNAP program, formerly called food stamps. Yeah. So the bottom line is this, that cost of living adjustments would be lower if we move away from traditional CPI to what's called the chain CPI. And I'll give you an illustration of how this works. Um, how much would payments change? Estimates show that under the chain CPI, your cost of living adjustment would only be about 0.3 percentage points below the plain old CPI. That only works out to about $3 less on every thousand dollars, which doesn't sound like much, but here's the problem. It keeps compounding over time, and I'll illustrate how that works. Look at it this way. The cost of living adjustment last year, or for this year, is 1.7 percent, okay? If your monthly Social Security check was $1,250 last year, that means it increases to $1,271.25 this year. With chain CPI, you would be getting $1,267.50, or only $3.75 less a month and $45 less a year. Again, that might not seem very big, but if the COLA is the same next year, this difference actually increases to $7.61 a month, $91.32 for the year. So you begin to get the picture. So the longer you live, the more the impact. The more the impact. If you're one of those people that is fortunate to make it to age 90 and you're still collecting Social Security, you could lose up to a month of income every year. That's oh. the effect of the compounding that would occur under chain CPI. How, how real is this threat of, 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 of uh, creating uh, in law uh, a chain CPI? Well, it's real to the extent that there are members in Congress, both in the House and Senate, who want to move toward this as a way of stopping increases in the cost of Social Security. And so I think that there's going to be a fight in Congress between those who want to move to this type of a calculation mm -hmm. versus maintaining the traditional way that we calculate the cost of living adjustment. Okay. And to find out more on this, uh, uh, we can go to workdayminnesota.org, uh, workday, W-O-R-K-D-A-Y, workdayminnesota.org, or to retired Americans. Dot, dot org. Uh, we can find out more about it and what we can do uh, to prevent mm -hmm. that. Steve Francisco, uh, former aide to Congressman Bruce Vento and former federal policy director for the Minnesota Council of Nonprofits. Uh, we've touched on a number of critical issues. We want to